I'm Carly Cornell. I'm Harvey Cornell and we are Dragon Phoenix Games. Today we're going to introduce you to a cooperative adaptation of Catan. This is part of our series of games for friends and lovers. Yes, uh, Carly and I have noticed that sometimes we're just in the mood to play cooperatively and don't feel like playing competitively where one of us has to lose at the expense of the other. And although there are, and some of our friends feel the same, and although there are a number of good cooperative games out there, there is still such a limited choice out there that sometimes we would like to have a few other choices. So we decided to try to convert some of our competitive games that we already have on our shelves into cooperative versions. And so we've done that, and the, uh, we're going to share those with you in this series. And the, the first one we have here today is Catan. Now, so um, we have a full set of instructions available as a PDF on our website, www.dragonphoenixgames.com. Um, please help yourself. Uh, they're free. Um, we invite you to go there and look also for links to other games because we will be rolling these adaptations out and the links to the videos will be there um, and as we develop them the PDFs will be there also. Um, we also invite you to join our mailing list and we'll let you know about upcoming uh, adaptations as we make them available um, for uh, various new games. Yeah, and we've already got quite a few other adaptations for things like um, Splendor, uh, Dominion, uh, Carcassonne, um, Ticket to, Ticket to Ride. Ride. We have quite a few of them ready. We just got to get the videos out, but the, they're already developed and written out. Okay, so let's uh, talk about how we adapted uh, Catan for cooperative play. Uh, basically, it's going to play pretty much the same as you uh, are familiar with the regular game. Uh, when you set up the board, you can either set it up with uh, the standard layout shown in the manual or you can do a random distribution of the tiles as long as the desert where the robber starts is in the middle. Uh, and another one of the differences is instead of using all the resource cards, we're going to use a limited number of the resources, resource cards because that's going to uh, play into uh, the end game uh, for our cooperative variant. Uh, we are using the largest army card, but we're not using the longest road. We are still using development cards, although we had to leave a few out to, to fit the cooperative play. Um, and then uh, there are some differences in the way trading happens and the way the robber is handled, and we're going to demonstrate those uh, with some examples of play. And so uh, we've already set the board up and everything, and we had to determine who was going to be first, and you can determine who's first by any means you wish. We chose to use rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, and Carly came out first. And so we've already put our starting settlements out and, and got our starting resources. So, mm -hmm. uh, so Carly's going to start with her first turn. So I start and I rolled a five. And that means that I get a brick and Harvey got, oh, here it is, the a wood. So I get those resources. He's got, so I'm looking at it, and the obvious thing here is with a brick and a wood, I can go ahead and build a road on my turn. Uh, when I set things up, I wanted to get down here to where I can make a trade at a three for one rate for any of my resources, so I'm going to go ahead and build my road out there. Okay, so now it's Harvey's turn. Okay, so I'll roll, and uh, I got a 10. So there is, there's no settlements or cities there, and on this 10, I, I have one settlement, so I'll get one mm -hmm. stone. And now I don't have exactly the right resources to build anything uh, right now, but Carly does have some things that would help me. And so now's a good time to talk about how trade works in the co cooperative variant. Um, in the normal game, there's really no trade restrictions. You can trade however many cards you want for whatever. It's just whatever deal you can work out. But for the cooperative game, the rule is that you have to trade only one for one. So um, if I want one of Carly's cards, I have to give her exactly one card in return. If I needed two of hers, I'd have to give her exactly two. So it's always a one for one deal. Now, I could trade for her brick and have enough to make a road, or I could trade for her 
wheat and have enough to get the development card. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to go for the development card. Sure. So I would need the wheat oh. and... Uh, I'll take the wood. Okay, so we're going to trade one for one, which yeah. is the, the way that I'm saying that we have to do it in the cooperative okay. variant. And now I have enough to get a development card. I need a wheat, a uh, sheep, and a uh, stone. So that will give me a development card. And that's really the only difference in the uh, trade. It's pretty simple, but it is pretty important to the way it plays. Now, I drew a knight card, so now is a chance for me to explain the difference in the way the knight card is going to be used. In the standard game, when you draw a knight card, you get to move the robber and steal a resource from the owner of his settlement. Well, uh, that's not going to happen in the cooperative game. Instead, uh, the knight card can be used to prevent the knight, the robber from moving and uh, stealing stuff from us when we roll a seven. So uh, if I were to save this for later, then if I rolled a seven at some point, I could discard the knight card and not have to move the robber and let him steal stuff. So, but the other thing is, um, in the regular game, you play your knight card and that counts towards your largest army. Here you have to make a choice. Uh, I could use it towards the largest army, in which case I would need three knight cards. But what I have to do is if, if I play it on my board, then I'm trying to count it towards getting the large army. If I save it in my hand, I have the option to use it on a later turn when I roll a seven to prevent the robber from moving. Um, I, even if I do save it, I can at a later time decide to play it to count towards the largest army. But So for now, I'm going to keep my options open and keep it in my hand so that maybe I can prevent the robber from moving on a later turn. And now, Carly, it's back to you. Okay. So I'm going to roll. And sure enough, look at that. I rolled a seven. So we have to get the robber to move now. Um, so we want to demonstrate that for you. Um, as in the normal game, when you uh, activate the robber, the first thing you have to do is check your resource cards to see if anybody has more than seven, and you would discard down if you do. Um, I've only got two. Harvey's only got two. We're not in, in any danger of needing to discard. Um, so the next thing we need to do is determine where the robber is going to go. So we have here, um, we identified the top of our Catan map. Uh, we just used a spare uh, blank that was available in the game and marked it top and we just uh, put it there. The reason for that is because we want to be able to evaluate the spaces around the robber for where he's going to go. Um, in this case, I rolled a 4 and a 3, which is here and here. And if you align that with the, the spaces on the thing, you'll see that the 4 is this one and the 3 is this one, which coincidentally is the numbers, but the main point is that it matches the dice. Um, the dice tell us which tiles to go to. So the two potential places that he would go to are, are these tiles. Um, the way you choose which of those tiles he's going to go to is you start first by are they both on the map? In this case they are, so uh, if, they, if one of them fell off then the other one's the obvious choice. Um, the second criterion that you use to measure is the value of the buildings on those tiles. Um, in this case I've got one settlement here and Harvey's got one settlement on this tile. So again we've come out even. Um, the next criterion you can look at is the number of spots on the numbers that are on the thing. This one has three spots. This one has two. Uh, so he's going to choose to go here. If those were tied, we could still break the tie by going to the number that has the red die. So we would go to the, the three in this case. But since we've got a, an un, uneven number of spots, he's going to choose to go here where there are three spots. Um, once he's there, he's going to steal something from me. So uh, I have to determine how much and what. Um, how you can tell that is by the uh, buildings that are on the tile. In this case, I've got one settlement. That's worth one point. That means he's going to uh, steal one resource. Uh, if I had a city on there that's worth two points, he would steal two resources, two settlements, two resources. You know, so that's how you count how much he's going to steal. Um, 
and then uh, which resource he's going to steal, he's going to take the one that is associated with that tile by preference. Um, as it happens, I don't have any grain here. So um, I get to choose which of my resources I'm going to give up. So this is a cooperative game, and we're, we both live and die by what resources we have. So I'm looking at what Hardy has, and we both have some wood out here, so I'm thinking uh, maybe we can afford to lose the wood. Uh, it is going out of the game, so it matters. Yes, and uh, now she still would get an opportunity to build if she had anything left to build with, but she's only got one card. And, and here's an example of how, uh, how the, that affects us, because with the trade, she'd have to trade her one brick to get one for me, so she can't even tr get this wood to build with, so she's that I'm prevented her from trying. doing anything. But anyway, this will go out of the game, and that affects the end game, and I will uh, explain that now. So uh, the end game, just like in the regular game, you're playing for points, and the points are calculated the same way, one for a settlement, two for a city, uh, there are some uh, development cards that have one point on them and uh, also the largest armory, army is worth two points. So you're calculating the points the same way but we're adding our points together and the goal is to reach 15. So if between us we have 15 points then we would end the game in victory. Now how do you lose? Well um, that's why we have a limited number of resource cards that we put out to make it where it's possible for some of these to run out during play. And so if any point during a game, uh, one of us is supposed to receive resource cards from the supply and there's not enough to give those to us, then we would lose the game. So we're going to be, during play, trying to make sure that these piles don't run out. I mean, we need some to work with, but we can't let those run out. So that's how you lose. And, you know, later in the game, it will become much more critical. But So that's, that's how you it. play Catan in cooperative mm -hmm. mode. So thank you for yeah. joining us. Thank you.